So I'm gonna domino this joint now. I've got two dominoes in already and that's all that's done is held it flat while I planed it off and got it pretty smooth to enable the domino to work properly across the rest of the board. And then I'm just gonna open up this existing joint here now. So I'll work that apart. And I'll put one of these in there. And push that. There we go. So, I marked across the top where I want my additional dominoes. And using the domino machine, I will just simply mortise those out. So you see I've got three marks here. And they are marked across to the other side. So I'll show you how it works. And for stability, I'm going to add some more underneath and I'll, so I'll square those down. I'm only going to put a few in if you want to go this one here. And I'll just make sure the theory is exactly the same because all I need to do, I'm just doing that to check how good they are. And I'll adjust the domino to the depth I need to go again. So I'm going to pull it up almost to its max and that is pretty pleasing and I'll redo those now. What I'm going to do is get them all roughly in position and then I'm going to paint that all with glue and clamp it together and then we've got a perfect joint.
So I've joined the mitre together and I'm really satisfied with this. I'll just run the camera over the top. It's effectively a mitre which goes up to the other end of the slab, which is hidden in the cabinet, which is where it gets its strength from. And I've worked it out that the weight of the piece hanging over the end where the router is, is actually cantilevered perfectly by the piece that's here. So when it slots into the unit, it actually holds itself. All I have is a couple of restraining screws hidden away behind a drawer on the other side of the island unit that will actually secure it. So it's only, it's, it's all being held effectively by its own weight and the structure of the cabinets. So with the live edge, the transition, these two pieces were sliced from the same log. So the cut from the log represents this face. So this one was cut and then turned over. Now that created a problem, which is the live edge. So the live edge here is tapered towards the back. And then because I flipped the slab, this one to get the grain matching on the mitre effectively as you come through there, it meant that the live edge was raking the other way. But it adds a little bit of interest. So what I'm doing as well is I'm taking off the radiuses on the corner because they're sort of hip height and you don't want to clatter into them as you're walking through after a few cans of beer. So to do that, I span a radius on a piece of MDF with my jigsaw and then I'm using a router. Now this is 75 mil, nearly three inches deep. And to do that, I'm using a 12 mil two flute cutter with a guide bush. The template, I'll just take you around here. The template is set back about eight mil. So when the cutter comes through and comes around, it removes what I want it to remove. Now, to do this, I've got a fairly long two flute cutter in the router. I'm gonna use that with the guide bush here and that will enable me to go only so far, maybe half the way through. Then I've got an extension collet here, which is super strong. And then I've got a really nice, long, sharp two flute cutter there as well, which will enable me to get the full depth. Now, I particularly like using the handled router. This is a medium sized router because all my pressure has to be pressed through this section here. I've got a long cut, so what you don't want it to do is twist and jar because you're going to hook out what you don't want to hook out, and then you've got to be doing more cleaning up or even make the radius slightly bigger and have another go. So let's get on and do that. So you can see I'm running out of cutter and the collets well into this little dust extraction port here. This is probably the last pass I'll do. I might get another one with this to see how we get on. Now, before I change the collet and put the longer cutter in, as I carry on around with the router, the chances are, if I leave this piece on, although it's not very big, the weight of it might want to pull and split back there. So I can get a handsaw in there and just tickle that out, get the worst of it off. And that's going to help me. So when I take the next bit round, 
this bit isn't going to break off and split back underneath. I know it's the underneath, but I'm going to smooth that off as well for people's legs. So let's get on, change that cutter, put the decent collet in there. So we'll just unplug the power. That's the beauty of these tools. You can take the cable out of this end as well. And then wallop that out there. We'll whiz out this. This one here for anyone who's not seen the ratchet section. We'll slide him out and we'll put the new one in. Treat it like a router bit. The router bits have a mark set on them where you should push them into the collet. So I like to make sure you don't overdo it, push it up too tight. Sometimes there's a little radius that holds them and they're not actually tight. So you can see now just how long that is. And that's fully extended. That gets me nearly all the way. So that's the first cut. So we'll get the power back on. You can see now what I was saying about how much that's hanging out. You know, it's quite a it's quite a bit of a tool. You've got to be pretty careful with it and make sure you're well supported and set up. This is where it will go terribly wrong. Right, let's get some power back in. That's it. Put that in. And away we go. Using the depth gauge, you can set the pass that you're going to do, it's quite important. You can actually physically see what you're going to take off next. And there we have it. And that's a really, really nice radius there. I'm just gonna take that spoke shape to there and round all these corners off and then ease the transition between. If I just have a look at that transition. Then I'll ease the transition here as it comes from the live edge coming round to the nice polished end. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I do like routing. <laughs>